What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be just taking a closer look at an ongoing project that I've been working with on my 2020 Honda Talon. And what this project is, is figuring out how to gain more leg room for taller riders in the front driver's seat. Now I've already done a video on creating some custom lift brackets for the driver's seat that can lift the driver's seat up about an inch and a half and shift it back about an inch and a half. That does help. I have been driving my Honda Talon around with this driver's seat lift and it's been working out fine. It does give me a little bit more leg room, but I would like to try to find a way to gain a little bit more leg room. So what I'd like to try to do today is start taking apart the front footwell liner because I want to figure out what is behind that left foot pad where your left foot sits up against. I know the wheel well is like right behind there, but I want to try to figure out a way to cut that foot rest area out of there because if I could get that out of there and maybe put some type of metal bracket up somehow, some way, because that left foot well area does shorten the leg room of a taller rider. So let's jump in and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is what I'm referencing. So again, as you can see here, I have created some lift brackets to get my seat up an inch and a half and back an inch and a half. But I'm not done with that. I still have some other ideas on how to tweak that. But today, this is what I'm referencing right here. So right here, this is your wheel well liner for your open wheel well right here. So there's not much we can do about that. It's this area right here. I like to try to find a way to get it out of there because you figure if we could cut this whole area out of here, that would gain us up to this wall right here that would gain us how much more foot room for our larger feet and longer legs. But because there's not a whole lot of room over here for both feet, your left foot is always sitting on this shelf, which puts your knee up really high as a tall rider. So if we can find a way to get rid of that and maybe find a way to brace it up in the back, removing this section right here will gain us some additional room. Now I kind of understand why they have it. Because again, if you're off-roading and you need a place to put your foot to kind of create like a brace, you don't wanna do it on this liner because you can just push your foot right through the liner over here. So I understand that, but there has to be a better way to get this out of there so that we have more leg room. So I'm gonna work on taking out this liner today because I wanna see what is behind this piece right here. So I'll be back in a few. Okay, so it's really hard to kind of get this whole thing out because you have to take all this stuff out. So I already took all the pins out and there's still just a lot more. And I don't feel like taking apart the whole machine to figure that out. So what I did was I came over here and I took a lot of these pins out. And if you take these pins out and look down in there, it's basically just an empty cavity, but there's your bottom of your frame right here. So that's all empty right there. So what I'm thinking for now is if I just cut like right here, I don't want to cut any higher. I need these holes and there's holes on the side, like over here. Okay. We need those too. So if we keep those holes there, that'll keep the wheel well liner on the back completely covering this area. So we won't get any debris inside. So if I just get my Dremel, take my Dremel cut up and around and then straight down and cut this whole section out down to about the bottom. I'll have a little bit more foot room there, but then I will need to figure out what am I gonna be able to do to put back here to stop my foot from sliding through the wheel well liner. So again, these are all things that I'm gonna have to figure out over time. Again, that's the purpose of customizing these vehicles to figure out what can we do to make these vehicles better to fit us. So being that I'm a taller rider, I always have to find ways to customize these vehicles to fit me better. But just like my motorcycles, every motorcycle I've had, I've probably had several Harleys over the past 10 years, I've always had to customize them to fit me as a taller rider. A UTV like this is no different. So I'm gonna have to just play around and figure out how to remove that. I think with that gone, that should really help give me a little bit more room for my feet, a little bit more leg room. So let me start cutting that out and we're gonna see what we can come up with. Okay, so I just wanted to show you before I start cutting anything, what my leg position looks like right now. So if you see here, my leg position here is my knees a little bit higher than my hip. And anybody with long legs knows that when you're sitting for a while and your knees are higher than your hip, you start to have more pain in your hips over time. So when I put the lift kit on the seat, I lifted the seat up an inch and a half and I moved the seat back an inch and a half. 
That actually helped because before my leg was more like this. Okay, when I sat down lower, but now that I moved the seat up and back, that raise in my knee is a little bit less, but my foot is sitting on that side well here. Now imagine if my foot could do that. Now you see my leg is flat. So again, this is what it looks like up on that foot well, but if I tuck my foot to where it's a little flatter, that's what it would be like. So if I could just get my foot flat across the floor like that, that would give me more comfortable leg room. But sitting up like this is just not very comfortable. So I really think that getting rid of this for me is probably gonna be more helpful. So let me go ahead and cut that out and we're gonna see if it makes any difference. Okay, so we're back. I went ahead and I cut out that bottom piece right here, okay? So it's protected right here. Here is your frame right here, your metal frame. So that's your frame there. So really, this is protected. This is still sturdy and protected. You didn't lose any structural integrity right here. You still have your frame here. And behind this little piece of plastic here, which I could pull out, all I did was I cut the top diamond plate portion off of that step and I just kind of trimmed it around. And then I cut out like a little bit of a flange on the side and I just tucked it in here like that for now. Because the way I have it jammed into here at the bottom, it's tucked in over here on the side and this top lip kind of hits the top portion here. It creates a really good solid foot barrier here so my foot is not gonna jam through there for now. Because again, this is not final. I still wanna figure out a way to probably get some kind of metal bracket or sheet metal and create like a better wall here, maybe rivet it in. So there's still a little bit of customization I wanna do here. So again, this is not done. But for now, I'm not really worried about how it looks on the inside because again, from the outside, you don't even notice anything. But when you get into the vehicle, let me step in. Okay, so now if you look here, I have all kinds of room to rest my foot right here. Again, because before, my foot had to be up on this angle way over here. Okay, I don't know if you can see how far away that is, but that's about where the angle was. So it was really uncomfortable to ride like that over time. Now my foot can lay flat on the ground, just like that. And then my right foot had all this room over here. Okay, so now, like I said, even if my foot hits up here, it's hitting that plate that I put there as a backer plate for now. But again, my foot's not going through the bottom because there's the frame. So my foot sitting right here is not gonna cause any issues with anything. But for today, I haven't seen anybody on YouTube or anywhere attempt to cut this out. I think a lot of people are afraid that it's gonna expose their wheel well liner. I'm gonna pull this out. It's just sitting in there, jammed in there for now. Okay. But that's basically your wheel well liner right there. So on the back, here's my hand. So I'm tapping right here. That's what this is. So there is the back of your wheel well liner. But again, you're not exposing or ruining anything down below. So again, all this whole opening was, was a hollow channel with a little bit of bracing on the back of the plastic to create a foot shelf like that, okay? But I cut all that out. I cut the top pattern off and then I just cut out this little flange because this flange here used to be more like a large triangle, okay? But I just cut that triangle out right here. I cut all that out and just left a little bit of a flange. That way I could tuck it over here in between the liner and the wheel well liner. And this way, I could jam it down in there, tuck it in there, and then it slides right into place as a backer board temporarily so that my foot's not putting any excess pressure on that wheel well liner. But I just gained all this floor space right here. So for a lot of you tall guys out there that are wondering what is behind this step, it's nothing really. The step was really just created to create a wall between your foot in that wheel well liner on the outside. But what I wish Honda would have done was created something a little smaller and beefier right here, giving you more room right here. But to chew up all this foot space and leg room right here with basically nothing, was kind of a bad design in my opinion. Now again, do I recommend cutting this out to everybody? No, if you're a shorter person with smaller feet, not a big deal. But if you're taller or you have bigger feet or you tend to wear big bulky boots when you're riding, you might wanna consider cutting that out and fabricating something else to kind of plug this space a little bit better. But trust me when I say, having a little bit more flat foot space right here 
definitely is much appreciated for someone with bigger feet or just longer legs and needs a little bit more leg room. So let me set the camera up and show you what I look like sitting in the vehicle now. Okay, so if you remember earlier in the video, when I filmed this exact position, I'll try to put a picture up here. This is pretty much the angle of my foot, okay? My foot was on a very steep angle, which puts a lot of pressure here at the bottom of your calf, right above your ankle here in the bottom of your calf, and it puts my knee a little higher. Now look. Now my foot's flat. I don't have any pressure on my ankle anymore, and my leg's a little bit more flatter. Is it perfect? No. But again, having my leg a little bit flatter and having my foot flatter on the ground takes a little bit more pressure off my leg and hip and takes a little bit more pressure off my lower ankle area. And so far, this feels pretty good. And again, having a little bit more room here left to right allows me to move my feet in different positions and just have a little bit more flexibility in where I put my feet in case I need to stretch out a little bit more. But so far, I actually really like how this feels having that area cut out a little bit. It just gives me a little bit more room for my feet and it feels really good. Okay, so the next thing we need to figure out how to do is to figure out how to design some sort of custom floor plate that'll fit this area right here so that I can create a 90 degree bend to cover this whole area. Now for maximum support, I'll try to get this plate starting here and follow this line all the way across and then come up and then over and then straight over here. And then once we get to here, we'll have to leave it longer so that we can do some trimming and then create a cut so that we can create our 90 degree bend here. I'll probably try to use some sort of aluminum, maybe something around a 16 or 14 gauge, maybe a diamond plate aluminum, but I don't know yet, so I'll have to figure that out. But I wanna cut it to fit this whole area right here. And then I could just drill a few holes, put some rivets or use some plastic plugs to bolt it down into place. That way I have a nice metal floor right here covering this area with a 90 degree bend so I can have a nice flush flat floor. But what I want to do first is take some cardboard and cut a piece of cardboard out in this shape and then do a little bit of trimming to get a template. Once I have a template figured out, then I can go ahead and buy a piece of aluminum so I can try to cut it to make this work. So let me do that first and we'll come back with an update. Okay, so after just doing a lot of trial and error and trimming up some little pieces of cardboard, I ended up coming up with this so far. Now again, this is all taped into place, but as you can see here, I'll just go ahead and notch it out around that little piece of frame here. And then this will bend back around to the side like that. But that's essentially what I want this bracket to come out looking like. But I think a two foot by two foot sheet of say a 14 or 16 gauge aluminum sheet metal and then trim it down to about three different sections. So let me pull this out and I'll show you what I did. So as you can see over here, this bottom piece right here, this whole piece here, and then the step portion was one piece. And if you have a two by two square, all this excess material here would be used to make the side wings. So what I did was I just kind of measured out the floor, okay? Notched in around here over the right side. That way it'll fit perfectly flat. And then I just went ahead and cut this chunk out over here. Then slicing this piece down over the side here from up the top all the way down, I found the 90 degree bend angle of where it needs to go. Then I just basically cut out this little wing right here which is just taped on for now. And then this would be a separate piece of metal. And then this triangle piece here with the notch, that'll be a separate piece of metal. So essentially it's really three different pieces. Now it could be four, and then I could weld this at the 90 degree portion here. That might be what I have to do as well. I don't know, it just depends. But so far it's coming along. I really think that if I can create a metal bracket just like this, It'll fit perfectly and then I could just put some plugs along the sidewall here, put some plugs along the back at the very top and then plug it on the side and essentially it's going to look just like that. So I really do think this is going to work. It's just a little tedious process but in my opinion it's worth it because to gain all of this excess floor area right here that wasn't there before, this is gonna really give you a lot more leg room. So again, I've seen a lot of you out there on the forums, a lot of people were complaining about this step, but they didn't know how to remove it or what to do with it. So I'm here to try to figure that out. So let me keep playing around with this and we're gonna figure this one out. Okay, so we went ahead and I did order a small sheet. If this is an eighth inch thick 3003 
aluminum diamond plate. So that's what this is. It's about roughly three by three, give or take. And again, I think I paid about 50 bucks for this sheet right here, so not too, too bad. And I went ahead and I took my cardboard and I pretty much just laid it out on the aluminum sheet like this and traced an outline of what I need to cut out with my grinding wheel. Then I have the side piece here that normally would go right here like this. I'm gonna do that separately as well as this side piece here that's gonna go over here on the side here. So I'm gonna to try to do it in a couple different pieces. I'd like to try to bend this step up right here, bend it like this. If I can't seem to get this to bend, then I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it and then I'll have everything welded together in separate pieces. But this is ultimately what I'm gonna to try to do here is have this cut out and this is gonna be my floor plate here. This piece here, if I cut down to about here, will allow this to fold up just like this, okay? So that's kind of what I want it to look like here. So again, just a little trial and error, playing around with things, trying to figure this out, but let me keep working on this and we'll be back when I have some more updates. Okay, so here's where we're at so far. So I got the bottom piece cut into place so far. So I got it edged out all the way across. Now I did drill a hole right here because below this point right here, there is a factory bolt that goes to the floor. So I basically just got a longer bolt that fit that thread pattern below and bolted that down so that holds it in place. So I did just score the back of this to bend it in place for now. And then I will end up putting a bead of weld there as well just to hold it in place. Now the next thing I'll have to do is cut out my triangular pieces right here that are basically just gonna fit like this. I'm gonna have to adjust this a little bit more because I pushed it back. And then what I'll do is I'll cut this piece out here that'll fit like that. So the only thing that'll be exposed is this little piece of the frame, but I probably will get some type of rubber gasket to go around here to make it look a little bit nicer. But essentially that's what it's gonna look like there. And then I got one more little piece. I have to cut out a little rectangle like this that's gonna basically go over here like that and box that in over there. Okay, so I did go ahead and I cut a small piece like this. I cut that little top flange off. Again, this is all trial and error, so this is pretty much gonna sit like that. This piece here is gonna sit like this. Let me see if I can kinda hold it up in place for a minute. And then this is gonna sit up there like that. So that's kind of my concept of what I'm trying to do here. So if I can get those couple pieces welded, this should slide right into place and I'll have this much floor space right here for my left foot. So now I just have to take this up to my buddy shop, get all this stuff welded together and we can wrap this project up. Okay, so we finally got the part back from welding. Everything went pretty good. And then I used a rubber mallet and just lightly tapped this left side to kind of bend it in sort of like a little bit of a arch. Because if you look over here, the way the, it's kind of hard to see in camera, but this left panel here does kind of come in a little bit more on an arch, okay? So just using a little rubber mallet on this aluminum here, don't hit it very hard, just lightly tap it. I was able to tap it into a little bit of a bow that way it fills that gap a little bit. So this is what it looks like now. Again, we got all of our pieces welded on. Got our top plate welded on. Everything's welded on real good here. Here's my cutout for that piece of frame at the bottom. So the next thing I have to do is sand this down a little bit. I'll probably just use my grinder here with a flap disc on it. That one's getting pretty chewed up, but I have a few extras over here. So what I'll do is I'll take a flap disc and just lightly go over this and sand it down a little bit on both sides. And then I'm just gonna take some two times coverage Rust-Oleum black paint and paint it. Okay, so after I got the part sanded down pretty good on both sides using a sanding flap disc like this, I then went ahead and took like a Brillo soap pad and used some water and scrubbed it down front and back real quick just to make sure any contaminants or dust or sanding debris was removed. Then I let the part dry. After it was completely dry, I started adding a couple coats of this Rust-Oleum two times coverage paint primer gloss black automotive grade. So I coated the front and the back. So now we're just gonna let it dry. So once it's completely dry, we'll go ahead and we'll start getting it mounted into the machine. But as you can see, it's turning out pretty good. So pretty happy with it so far. So once that's dry in another day or so, 
We'll put it in the machine and we'll wrap this up. Okay, we are finally done. We have a few coats of the black Rust-Oleum paint on here. Now again, this is a paint and primer. And yes, I know that this finish is probably not gonna last. Having this powder coated would probably have been a better choice, but for how much abuse this is probably gonna take, spending all the money on powder coat was probably gonna get ruined anyways, and so will this paint. As it gets damaged, we can sand it a little bit more, add a little bit more paint, and keep it nice and clean. But overall, the finish came out pretty good. We have it all painted black on all sides. Okay, so we got everything painted. And that's how it came out. So now all I have to do is go ahead and mount it back in the machine on the floor over here. Again, we cut this whole step out and I have it nice and smooth and flat. Now these ridges, I'm gonna leave them there. It's because when I lay the bottom plate on top of that, it creates little water air channels underneath. So if any water or moisture comes up underneath of this foot plate area, these channels here will keep the foot plate area a little bit elevated, just slightly to allow water to dry and to clean out from there. And again, taking this step out for easy cleaning is very simple because we're just gonna have one bolt up here. So once you take that bolt out, the whole unit pops out. When you're done cleaning, you can put it back in and then you're good to go. So let me go in here. I'm gonna wipe this area out a little bit and then we're gonna go ahead and install it and we're gonna see how it comes out. So I'll be right back in a minute. Okay, we are done. So let's take a closer look. That's what it looks like. So as you can see here, we have it bolted down in the back with a bolt. So that's a good mounting position there. Then I just added a self-tapping screw over here to the side and then one over here at the front corner. And that's what it looks like. So again, we have nice coverage at the top. We have coverage at the side. We have a little opening for the factory bend in the frame that comes up here to allow this post to clear the floor but you still have all this room right here for your foot where it wasn't there before. So if you remember before, this step was sitting like that. So you did not have all of that floor space, but with this step cut out, so now if you look down below, we have all this foot room here that we didn't have before. Because remember before, there was a shelf right here, so your foot had to sit up like this in a very uncomfortable position. Now you can keep your foot flat on the floor. You can still work your brake and gas pedal here as normal. And you have all this room now for your feet. So this right here gives me much more leg room to keep my foot flat instead of putting pressure on my ankle, having my foot bent up like this and having my knee up on a weird angle like this, okay, to keep my foot in that position. Now my foot can lay flat on the floor. I have plenty of room down here to move around. Work my gap, I can still work my brake and gas pedal. So removing that side step and doing a floor modification like this it definitely makes a difference when trying to increase your overall foot room, especially if you have larger feet or you're wearing bigger boots or you're just a taller rider in general. Doing something like this makes a huge difference and I'm really happy with how it turned out. So again, just to give you a rough measurement here, if the existing floor step stopped right here, as far as flat area for your left foot, you had about eight inches from the standard layout. Now, if you look at it, if I can get this to bend down in there, we have about 16 inches of total flat area for our left foot. So we doubled the amount of floor space on the left side over here by just cutting out that step and creating our own bracket here on the floor. Now you don't have to create a bracket this big. I probably could have just cut this down right here and bolted it down just on the left side. That's perfectly fine. I only did it this way for added stability. You probably don't need to go this big. If you just wanted to do this side right here and cut this down, you'd still have the same amount of open floor space. I just created a large bracket here to keep everything consistent and looking the same. But overall, this modification makes a huge difference when gaining leg room, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Okay, everybody, so we are finally done. So again, the purpose of this modification was to remove that left step that's on the left side of your footwell for the driver on the Honda Talon. This modification is great for people that have larger feet or if you're a taller rider like myself or if you just happen to wear big lunky boots and you're looking for more foot room. 
So if you happen to have a Honda Talon and you're looking to gain maximum leg room and foot room, removing that left foot shelf on the driver's side wheel well will definitely make a huge difference, but you have to create some type of metal bracket that's gonna stop your foot from accidentally going through the wheel well liner out into the front over here, okay? So you just wanna make sure you create a bracket the bracket that I created for this modification, it just took a little time to figure out, but again, it wasn't that hard. But at the end of the day, the result is what I was looking for. So anytime you happen to have an issue with something, no matter what it is, if you just take the time, think it through, and just try to be creative, you'll be able to figure it all out. But overall, this whole modification was pretty simple and easy. Well, I have less than $100 invested in this modification because I had to buy the metal and I had to pay someone to weld it, which was not very expensive. But if you happen to have welding equipment and know how to weld, you could do it for a lot cheaper. But at the end of the day, everything turned out like I had envisioned it. It works great, it fits good. I have additional legroom and additional foot space, which makes my overall driving experience as a tall rider for the Honda Talon, much more enjoyable. So that's it for today's video. I hope this video helps some of you out. Do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button and like this video. If you happen to have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And also do me a favor, subscribe to the channel because it definitely helps me out and I greatly, greatly appreciate it. So that's it. I just wanna say thank you to each and every one of you. Thank you, I truly appreciate you all. And as always, See you in the next video.